Hello everyone, welcome to another video, and today I will be going over traits. This will be part one in a series of mechanics guides where I teach you everything you might need to know about the game from traits to synthesis to combat stats and things like that. But for this first part, we will be taking a look into what traits you should be using, what they all do, um, and everything like that to sort of just give you a better idea of what gear you should be going for in the game. So first off with traits, um, if you go to your container here, you can see, you know, all of your items, especially your material items. This is mostly where traits come from along with characters. Um, one important thing, especially with materials, is that you can see whether or not a material transfers to a battle item or an equipment item, right, based on this little icon right here. So this is the icon for equipment items. This is the icon for battle items, and battle items and equipment items have different traits, trait pools, so uh, kind of just a little helpful thing to know. Um, we are going to be mostly talking about equipment items today because traits on battle items are not quite as important, but I will go over the battle items very quickly just to give you a basic idea of what to go for on these as well. And honestly, the main thing you need to know for battle items is that Buff items should be taking critical finish. Um, critical finish is the most important battle item trait. It is the only one that improves your damage and basically everything else on buff items and stuff uh, isn't really gonna be used. Um, and buff items are the most commonly used battle items. Uh, healing items can get these healing bonus traits, but they're really bad. Like this one at level five is a 10% multiplicative healing boost onto this 15% so it gives you like an extra 1% healing. It's not really worth trying to make good healing items with good healing traits. You really just care about critical finish for extra damage on your buff items. And then, you know, things like physical curse, magic curse can be okay on debuff items if you need to make debuff items for like some niche scenarios. Like there's some floors in Affinity Tower for that. But it's mostly critical finish. So on to equip items. And this is where there's a lot more variety in useful traits and where you'll be going, you'll be making a lot of different types of gear. Um, if you ever want to see all the traits in game, you can go to the filter here and you can see the trait filter. You can select these traits to uh, more easily see your items and they're, you know, sectioned off. Uh, you can just see all of them. So like if you wanted to look for all of your items with skill power up, you can, you know, select that. And you can see here all of your items that have a copy of skill power up on them. Um, so, you know, very useful little feature there. Um, it also works in the materials page as well. Um, however, there will also be buff traits in here. Actually, wait, does the materials only have buff traits? That's kind of, uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. No, that still doesn't change it. Anyways. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. You have to select equipment and then you can choose a trait. So you can see that everything with skill power like this. Uh, currently we can't see what color an item is, um, from this page, but we will be able to in the future. That's a quality of life feature coming to JP. Anyways, now that we've sort of gone over, you know, what traits are. I'm gonna sort of go through all of the traits that we currently have in the game that transfer to equipment and just sort of uh, tell you like which ones are good and useful for each role. So for attackers, the most important trait period is skill power up. Skill power up is better than every other damage trait. And I should say here that skill power only increases damage. It does not affect stun. It does not affect healing. It only increases damage of all of your skills. This includes burst skills. So skill one, skill two, and burst. Skill power affects all of them. Um, and this is the trait you want on your gear. As you can see, uh, I have a number of items with skill power 5 plus skill power 4 on them. Ideally you want 5 plus 5, but the odds of this are very low, so in general, um, for a base like good set of gear, you want 5 plus 4 skill power. Um, that's kind of the point where you want to be trying to get to. 
right now at the start of the game, and that is going to be your highest priority because this is your best damage increase. Um, single attack power is also skill power, um, but it only works for single target attacks, and all target attack power is also skill power, but it only works on area attacks, and these are your three skill power traits. Um, this one is more niche, uh, this one's more useful, and this one's completely general. They all have the same value, they just have different sources, so you might ask, you know, why would you ever use single attack power up or all target attack power up? And that's because they come from different sources. So you can, so when you're synthesizing items, um, that kind of matters, right? So you can get more copies of it in your like trait pool, like single target attack power is on Meru, the newly released Meru. And you can see she's green yellow, which means she links to Reuven, which is yellow red. Um, so you can get single attack power up and skill power up, and then also like a zapping water for another skill power up all in the same synthesis for a higher chance at getting two copies of the trait on the item. Um, so ideally you only want skill power up, but because of that, because single attack power up is on Meru, sometimes you'll have this one. And sometimes you'll have all target attack power up if you're using an item like, say, Ivihibrau as your material. Um, it's a little more niche, but it's still useful. Now, why is skill power so much better than, for example, a damage boost such as fire damage boost, which has the same value, right? Um, so one reason, and this is very important, is skill power is generic. It will apply to any character. Um, Whereas the fire damage boost will only apply to fire skills. With seven elemental damage types in the game, uh, only applying to one of those types is honestly really, really bad because you are not able to pick and choose your traits in this game um, at whatever levels and combinations you want. It's actually very, very difficult to make good gear. So when you're making gear, especially your initial set of gear, you want it to be as generic as possible to be able to transfer it to as many different characters as possible for to have it as usable on as many different characters as possible because you can't make like seven, 10 different gear sets, right? You just don't have the resources for that. Resources for that, it takes way too much luck. Um, so you really want more generic traits, and that is the first big benefit to going for skill power. However, the second benefit, and arguably, arguably the more important one, is that skill power is straight up just more damage. Um, so what I mean by that is skill damage um, is its own damage bucket that's all additive with each other. That means if you were to say have fire skill damage, um, 25% and then like magic damage boost for magic skill damage 20% then a fire skill will be doing 45% uh, more damage not 25% uh, more and then 20% more of that these traits add together whereas skill power is a separate multiplier so skill power will add to itself um, but they won't add to the damage boosts and why is this important it's important because damage boosts are a much more common multiplier. Skill power, the only source of it is on is from the traits. However, damage boosts have many, many, many sources. So for example, let's say you have a character with no gear and you use three Draken Elixirs on them for a 180% burst skill damage boost. Um, that means after that, your fire damage boost will only be doing about will only be supplying about 7% more damage if you were to add, you know, an item with fire damage boost 5. However, if you were to add an item with skill power 5, that will be giving you the full 25% more damage. Um, so skill power is just straight up more damage in basically all cases, because you cannot get higher values from these. Um, there are some cases where you might want to mix and match, but not really, because like especially once we get really strong buff characters such as Liddy, which will be applying like a 50% damage boost, um, it really devalues these traits. And there's other skills that characters have, Memoria, Gear, that all apply damage boosts that just really devalues damage boost traits, so you really um, only use these if you have to. You ideally want to be going for skill power. So yes, the only trait you really want on your attackers in most cases is skill power. Um, and yeah, 
basically you should be going for skill power 9, skill power 10 gear, um, which skill power 9 would be 5 plus 4 and 10 would be 5 plus 5. Unfortunately, I don't have any skill power 10s on global yet, <laughs> um, so that's unfortunate, but 9s are good enough for most content for a long time. Uh, 10s are fantastic, but 9s are good enough. And this is really what you want to be going for for attackers. Now, how about breakers? And breakers really just want to be going for stun damage boosts. Um, so like I mentioned before, because of how hard it is to make gear in this game, you generally want more generic gear. So, but for breakers, that's a little bit different. Um, because every little bit of extra stun damage helps a lot, right? So the 20% you get from magic in fizz stun damage boost is going to be a lot stronger than the 15% you get from the generic stun damage boost. So ideally you do want to make two sets of breaker gear, one set for magic breakers and one set for fizz breakers. Um, so, you know, yeah. Uh, these stun damage boost traits are the only things that actually affect stun damage as far as traits go. So you, these are the most important traits on your breakers. There's also stun damage boost resolve and full. I don't recommend using these because they are, you know, um, they, you don't get any benefit for using them. It's still 20% like these traits and they are very specific, right? They're not active all the time. so. They can be a little annoying to use. I wouldn't recommend using these at all. Um, and stun damage up. This is just a damage boost. It has a bit of a higher number than other damage boosts, but it is a it is just a damage boost. It's pretty mediocre. I don't recommend ever synthesizing with this trait. Um, but yeah, main traits for your breakers: physical stun damage boost for physical breakers, magic stun damage boost for magic breakers, and then. The generic stun damage boost is fine, um, and gear with it isn't bad, but I don't recommend it. If you do have to make gear with it though, it's not terrible, right? It's still fine, um, and then these ones are bad. So that is all of the breaker gear. Now how about supporter gear? And supporter gear is kind of where things get interesting, because there's a few different ways to itemize supporters. Um, there's a number of different traits for buffs and debuffs, and then also for recovery. So it really depends on what supporter you have. So you have supporters like Ixel and Claudia, which give damage boosts to your allies and Lydia as well in the future. And for those supporters, you will want enhanced damage buff A, which boosts the potency of damage buffs given to attackers by 50% at level five. Um, this trait is very, very strong. So let's say, so for example, Ixel gives a 20% fire damage boost to an ally. I believe it was 20%. Uh, we can go check wherever Ixel is. Yes, after recovery, boost targets fire damage by 20% for two turns. Um, so with this trait, That'll boost it by 50% with one copy and 150% with three copies. So that'll be giving that buff, that'll be boosting that buff with three level five copies of the trait up to a 50% damage boost instead of a 20% damage boost. And this will be the same for Liddy when she comes out. Um, it should be the same for Claudia as well. Uh, she boosts all his, all his ice damage by 25%, so it'll even be a bit higher, right? at around 62% with all the traits. Um, very, very strong. And you're going to be wanting to make gear with this trait for your supporters that do give damage buffs. This also works for critical damage. Um, so example from Lightning Resonus Burst, uh, after attacking boost all allies critical damage by 30% for two turns. This trait will also apply to this burst and other sources of critical damage. However, it will not apply to traits with other buffs like Ellie's magic attack buff. It won't apply to this because it is not a damage boost. It's specifically traits, it's specifically buffs that affect damage. 
Um, it will also apply to equipment and memoria that give specifically buffs. So things that last turns are buffs. However, it won't apply to items. Um, using items, there's not a single trait for equipment that applies to items. So don't expect this to be like supercharging your Draken elixirs or anything like that. Uh, this will only apply to buffs given through skills, equipment, and memoria. So, but this is the most important supporter trait uh, for supporters that can actually use it. And it only comes on items as of now. It doesn't come on any characters. It probably will not come on characters ever in the future, if I had to guess, because it is such a powerful trait. Um, so yeah, you can only get one copy of it on each piece of equipment. You cannot get two copies of it because you can, can be because it's not on characters. Um, then there's also this one for giving damage buffs to breakers. This is not particularly useful. There are some niche scenarios in Affinity Tower where you might make cursed gear with this, but obviously your breakers are there for stun damage, not damage. So yeah, this one's pretty mediocre. Um, there are a couple of other buff traits, if I can find them, or debuff traits. Here they are. So there is enhanced physical magic resistance up and enhanced physical magic resistance down um these for the most part do not apply to supporters supporters don't really have these effects but since i'm talking about buffs i may as well go over these are well as well these traits are very 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 limited um they only apply to what they say they apply to which is debuffs that uh, affect received physical damage up and received magical damage. So for example, Claudia, wherever she is, I had her just a moment ago. There she is. I clicked the other blonde. Whoops. Um, her debuff reduces ice resistance. That will not be affected by this trait. It has to be specifically an effect that increases the magic damage received by the target. Um, so resistances won't be that. Uh, for example, like Sophie uh, reduces all resistances. That won't be affected, I believe. Yes. So Ray's has this on a skill one. Boosts physical damage target receives by 5% for five attacks. It will affect effects like this. And right now we don't really have any effects in the game that this is good with. But for characters in the future, such as Valentine's Eska, this ends up being a very strong trait. Um, and then we also have the other version for the buff version of those traits, received physical damage down and received magic damage down. This one applies to specifically uh, skills on like on Linka, Totary, Lent. Um, so after attacking reduces own magic damage received by 50% for two attacks. Or after attacking reduce all allies magic damage received by 15% for one attack. Uh, you can make these skills very, very strong by stacking this trait uh, with three of these traits at level five on the gear that will increase the effect by 120%. So you can make Linka be taking like, you know, 65% less magic damage after stacking this up or whatever, right? Um, or for allies, like 30% per stack. So very, very strong. Lent also has a similar thing, uh, except for physical damage. And Totary, I believe, also has a similar buff. Reduces physical damage received, reduces physical damage received, reduces physical damage received. So these types of traits are very, very strong defensively on characters that have those sort of buffs, right? So this is a very good one for those specific characters. However, it is more niche um, and it's generally mostly only used in the hardest content, such as Affinity Tower, where you really need that extra defense. And then other than that, for supporters, you're mostly going to go for recovery. Um, the good recovery traits uh, the recovery boost trait isn't very good. It's only 15%. However, the more specific ones do end up being a lot better, um, such as the defender recovery boost. This is mostly used on defenders themselves, but it can be okay on supporters. Uh, kind of the big one is recovery boost resolve, um, which boosts your recovery when you need it most, right? 
by a whopping like 40%. This trait is a really good recovery trait, um, but it can be kind of awkward to use some, sometimes. The full one, not quite as good because you generally want that recovery when your team is low on HP, not when your supporter is, you know, high on HP. Um, but also the single recovery boost and all recovery boosts are fine as well. The all recovery boost is probably the main one you're going to be using for a long time because you get this very often when making skill power gear with Cornira and Quake Crystal. Um, and it goes well on Meru, Meru, but you will also get like single recovery boosts. Um, actually, so not, sorry, it's normal recovery boost from zapping water, uh, when you're making skill power gear with Reuven. So you might also use this one as well. It's weaker, but since you will already have gear with it as a byproduct of making skill power gear, it's still usable. Um, but all recovery boost is probably the strongest one because area healing is just very good. Um, and then Resolve, if you're specifically going out of your way to make recovery gear for a supporter, recovery boost Resolve is good as well. Uh, this one is probably the strongest recovery trait in the game, however, but you mostly put it on your defenders for their own recovery to themselves and not on your supporters. Because for your supporters, you really want their healing to affect everyone in your party equally. Um, for your defenders, they normally have recovery for themselves, such as Sophie's skill 1, which heals herself by like 40% if she's at low HP. Stacking this trait on her can get her basically a full heal. Uh, it's super, super good for characters like Sophie, for characters like Patty in the future. It's even okay on Oscar. Um, it's just really good for defenders that actually heal themselves. And this is a one of the stronger defensive traits for defenders in general. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of everything you need to think about for a supporter. Uh, and for defenders, um, it gets a little more complicated. Uh, in general, for defenders, I don't recommend making defender gear unless you absolutely need it for a specific content because skill power gear, stun gear, that stuff is just much more important your defenders will be okay on their own, right? Um, without too many traits. On top of that, defensive traits are just very weak. If you're going to make defender gear, I recommend it being recovery gear over defensive like trait gear. Um, but I will go over the defensive options in the game just so that you know, you know what exists and why it's not very good. Um, so first off, we have physical resistance up and magic resistance up and these are your more generic defensive traits however the values on them are very low only going up to five percent in level five and not only that they only apply to about half the damage in the game right so these traits are just they're not very good I, in my opinion it's not worth making gear with these traits uh, there is a very good synthesis recipe of sd into ud into crackling water but I just don't think it's worth making gear with these traits because the values are so low and they're not, you know, generic enough. You can still get a very solid amount of, you know, damage reduction if you have like nines of these on your defender, but that's spending a lot of resources towards something that overall isn't really that effective, right? Because the values are just that low. Like, for example, for Sophie, uh, defensively, I think, you know, re defender recovery is much stronger, much more powerful. It will heal her back more HP than you will save from the damage mit mitigation from these traits, right? So, because the values are just so low. There's also a defender version of the traits, physical resistance up D, which is specifically for defenders. However, you don't get a bonus. It's still the same value at 5%, right? So it's not, it's just not very good. And then we also have, you know, other resistances. So for each specific type, slash resi resistance, strike resistance, stab resistance, etc. Uh, these are very specific. They are not good, generally. Um, these are something that you synthesize with on a, like, basis of need. Like, do you specifically need this trait to clear content? right? Like, are you stuck on something like a floor in Affinity Tower where getting this extra resistance will help you out? 
In that case, you might want to synthesize gear with these. Um, in general, no, don't touch these at all. You only use these if you need them at the moment. And the most use useful one is generally strike resistance. Uh, there's a lot of enemies with strike damage in Affinity Tower, and strike resistance has been used to get effect in certain very difficult floors of Affinity Tower. But unless you are at that point in your progression where you absolutely need this, I do not recommend making it at all. Um, this is, like I said, something you only synthesize when you absolutely need it and you have no other choice. Resistances are just, they're too specific. Um, you really don't want to commit resources to these. And then for our last defender trait, um, our last few, I guess, we have these more uh, specific conditional de uh, defensive traits, um, which are all resistance, all resistance is up resolve, magic resistance full, and physical resistance full. Um, these traits are actually fairly decent with the most generic one being the resolve one. So damage reduction in this game is additive, which means with, you know, a bunch of copies of magic resistance up full and physical resistance up full, you can get very high amounts of damage reduction to these types. So like three of these will add up to 45%. And if you have some generic damage reduction from gear, from character passives, you can very quickly start getting up to that full like 100% damage reduction because it's all additive. And once you're at 100%, you're taking zero damage. So if you do get a set like that, then you will be taking 100% reduced damage from magic. However, in practice, it's not actually that useful because most challenging content in the game switches up damage types between magic and physical. There are very few areas where you're taking purely fizz damage or purely magic damage, right? Um, it's usually split, but if you are just taking purely fizz damage or purely magic damage, then these can be good options, but I wouldn't recommend synthing with them, you know, randomly. You should only synthesize with them if you know that that's the solution to the content you're facing. Um, and then all, uh, Resolve Defense, this one here, is a little bit better. It's a little bit more niche, but it does apply to all damage, and 10% is still a good amount of damage reduction, especially, you know, when you need it most, when your defender's HP is low. Um, I myself make a decent amount of gear with this on JP. However, I don't recommend making gear on it until later when you have Patty, who is a character that can supply this trait as well. I don't think this trait is worth it right now on global. However, it can still be useful. It's not a bad defender trait at all. I quite like it personally. So yeah. And that is about it for defender traits. I did mention earlier that this buff trait for fizz damage down and receive magic down is very strong on characters that can take advantage of it such as Lent, link and uh lent and linka <laughs> um however once again it's the type of thing where you only make it when you know that you need it for specific content because you really don't need much defense for most content right and that kind of brings me to um, one final defensive trait, and this is a defensive trait that you're kind of going to be going for on everyone um, when you need it. It's the strongest defensive trait in the game by far, and that's the all-target attack resistance app. And this is good on attackers, supporters, breakers, and defenders. It's good on everyone, okay? It's great on everyone. Um, however, once again, it's mostly a tower thing. Uh, outside of Affinity Tower, you don't have much use for the extra defense over just going for more damage to end fights quicker. But this trait in Affinity Tower and in just really high damaging content is invaluable. And basically how this works is at level five, it's a 25% damage reduction to attacks that hit your entire party. Um, with three copies of this, that's a 75% reduction on those attacks. You don't normally need th three copies. Very often, if you need it, it's only one to two. However, it is the strongest defensive trait in the game for a reason. It's even good on your defenders because it helps them take less damage from the area attacks so that they can take more damage from the single target attacks. 
And in 95 to 99% of cases, the only damage your non-defenders will be taking are attacks that hit your entire party. There's a few exceptions, such as counter mechanics like jellyfish and sheep, or the rare enemy that will avoid taunt, which we've had in the recent event dungeon. But for the most part, your attackers, your supporters, your breakers will only be taking area damage. So this area defense trait is the strongest defensive trait. Um, it's on some good materials, such as Eva Hibrow, Smack, Polypore Shroom, these materials all supply um, area defense along with other good traits, such as the smack has stun damage boost, right? So, you know, if her brow has all target attack power, which is the main reason you might end up having gear with that trait, there's, there's some options, right? So very good trait to keep an eye on, especially if you want to target affinity tower. But once again, defensive traits are the kind of thing where it's like, you get them as you need them, um, but good gear with uh, AoE defense, this trade on it, is never going to be a bad thing. It's generally quite helpful, um, and it's one of your better traits, especially for supporters if you don't need like a damage buff trait, right? So very solid trait, definitely keep an eye on this one. Um, as far as the traits that are left go, it's basically just these Slayer traits. So traits that boost damage or resistance to a specific enemy type. Um, these aren't very useful, like at all, mostly because enemies are kind of like, you're fighting multiple different types of enemies on any given battle. And once again, it's very difficult to make gear, so making gear that's only good against one enemy type is kind of annoying. I have never used these traits on my Jap my Japan server account, so yeah, they're they're just not very good. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, now we have an overview here um, for your attackers. Skill power up. This is your most important trait. Period. You want more. You want good damage gear, that's your highest priority. So double skill power up on your gear. And then all target attack resist is a good filler if you need it for the defense. Um, but I recommend getting double skill power gear before getting skill power plus uh, AOE defense gear. Breakers are the same thing. You just want stun damage up on them, uh, either physical or magical. And then for defense, all target attack resist is your sole defensive trait which you get as you need it. Um, however, it can be pretty good to make all target attack resist breaker gear anyways because of the smack item, which gives stun damage up and all target attack resist on the same material. So breakers are a bit easier to make that uh, sort of AOE defense gear for. Then for defenders, um, if you have a defender that heals themselves, recovery gear is solid. Um, if you have a defender that gives buffs to, defensive buffs to themselves, then buff traits are solid. Um, and then mitigation traits in general are more niche. But, uh, you know, resolve defense is good. Area defense is good. Everything else is a bit more mediocre. Um, and for defenders, more or less, if you don't have good skill power, gear yet or good stun damage gear, I would say defender gear is a lower priority and you should just put your excess skill power or stun damage gear straight onto the defender. Um, if you don't have good gear for your other roles, then your defenders can, you know, take some of their rejects and they'll be fine. Right. And then for supporters, uh, if your supporter is mostly focused on healing, you want to go recovery. If your supporter is mostly focused on buffs, then you want to go for damage buff A if they have damage buffs. And then for defense, it's all target attack resist. Unfortunately, you cannot get AOE defense and damage buff A on the same item um, because they are both material only traits and they are not on the same material. But, you know, it's just something you sort of have to live with. Um, and you just have to mix and match, uh, you know, go like figure out what you need for the specific content. But Damage buffet, definitely the most important supporter trait, uh, as we, especially as we get stronger supporters in the future, such as Liddy. And recovery is sort of like just generically useful on most supporters. Um, so recovery is not bad. 
Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what you're looking for on each character. And I think that is about it. Um, so as I do more videos in this series, um, next one's going to be on synthesis mechanics, then we'll do something on like battle sets and whatever. Um, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I won't be answering them directly. However, I will gather them up and do an FAQ style video at some point with a lot of your questions um, and go through and answer all of those. So anything that has been bothering you that you've been wanting to ask, um, yeah, just go ahead, throw that down in the comments and I will get to that, get to those most likely in a video in the future. So, you know, thanks for watching. I hope this was informative and coherent and look forward to the next part. Um, I hope you're all looking forward to the next part and I will see you all later. Thanks again. Bye-bye.